Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. Presenting Detective Nick Harris in a salute to the law. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we again bring you Detective Nicholas B. Harris, chief of the internationally known Los Angeles Detective Agency, bearing his name in another dramatized true life story proving to the youth of today the folly of committing crime. <laughs> Mr. Harrison. Thank you, Mr. Lake, and good evening, everyone. Tonight, I bring you the final chapter of the strange but true story of the Avenging Age. Last week, a wealthy man under the assumed name of Mr. Collins called at my office. He explained that he wished to dedicate his life and fortune in helping others to avenge the wrongs perpetrated upon people who were unable, through financial reasons, to bring the wrongdoers to justice. It so happened that just that day, I had received a mysterious phone call asking for help. Upon investigation, the call had been sent by a ten-year-old boy, Jimmy Newton, asking me to locate his father. His mother, Mrs. Newton, refused all information concerning the disappearance of her husband because she had been silenced by the men who were holding her. The Collins and I then located this Jimmy at school. He told how his father had been working a mining claim and had been carried off by some men in the car with an Arizona license. I picked him up then to the school, took him in our car, and took him to the Newton home. And as we approached that home, we saw a car shoot out of the driveway and turn the corner at great speed. We tried to follow. The car was lost in traffic. Returning to the house, uh, we found the door locked. And looking through the window, we saw the body of a woman lying on the floor. Thinking that this was Mrs. Newton and that she had been murdered, I broke the glass in the front room window and entered. To our great surprise... Jimmy claimed that the woman lying on the floor was not his mother, that he had never seen her before. And just then, this strange woman regained consciousness. And we heard a noise in the next room. The door opened. Ma! What? Jimmy, is that your mother in the doorway? Sure it is. But see, Ma, what happened? Never mind now, Jimmy. I'll tell you later. So you're Jimmy's mother, Mrs. Newton. Yes, and who are you? He's Mr. Collins, Ma. Yes, Mrs. Newton. Mr. Harris and I came to help you, if possible. Jimmy, have you been talking? Sure, Ma. They're going to help us. Just keep them telling you. Uh, first, Mrs. Newton, who is this woman on the Davenport? Her name is Lee. Carly. Why did she scream and faint when she saw you in the doorway? Oh, she was scared, I guess. Mr. Harris went to the drugstore, Ma. The phone for an ambulance. I don't think she's seriously hurt, Mrs. Newton. Oh, I'm glad. I thought I'd kill her. Who's that in the other car, Ma? What other car? The one that threw out of our driveway just before we got here. I don't know, Jimmy. I, I don't know anything about it. But gee, Mom, didn't you see the car? No, I didn't. That's funny. Did she come in that car? Jimmy, please. Mother doesn't want to talk about it. Jimmy, will you go outside and see if Mr. Harris is coming back? Sure, I'll go right now. Please forgive me, Mrs. Newton, when I say I'm your friend and that I only want to help you. Well, why should you? Because, well... Just to repay others who helped me when I needed a friend. And it, it sounds mighty queer to me, but maybe you are on the level. All right. Only I don't know anything you can do. Well, Mr. Harris and I are going to help you find your husband. But you must help too, Mrs. Newton, by telling us everything that's happened. All right. All right, I'll tell but you. What about this other woman, Cora Lee? Who beat her up? I did. You? Yes, I did. I meant to kill her. But, but why, Mrs. Newton? Why did you want to kill her? Well, when she told me about Jim. Oh, then everything just went black and... Oh, look. Oh, look, she's coming, too. That's right. Listen, oh. I'll go out in the kitchen and see you get her away. Maybe that's best. Oh. Now, take it easy. Take it easy. Oh, where is she? Come on, Emil, again. Please. Emil is gone. There's nothing to be afraid of now, Miss. Oh, where's Emil? Where's Philippe? Emil, Philippe. Yes, Emil, right here in Philippe Ortiz. Where are they? The men who brought you here? Yeah, sure, sure, they brought me here. They were going to take me back to Jim. They haven't gone, have they? Yes, I'm, uh, I'm afraid they have. Why, that dirty rat. Say, say, who are you? I never saw you before. How did you know my name? Collins is my name. I was uh, sent out on this case. What do you mean, sent out on this case? Who sent you? Mr. Harris is back, Mr. Collins. The ambulance is coming too. Ambulance? For you, Miss Lee, to take you to the hospital. I don't want to go to any hospital. 
see if you see. Don't make a noise. No, not me. I'm not going to the hospital. I'll run away. I'll... Oh. You see? Oh. Now, don't be foolish. Oh. You want to get well, don't you? Oh, yeah. Sure. Then go sure. to the hospital. There's nothing to be afraid of. You'll be treated with kindness and consideration, I promise you. Yeah. Yeah, but... Maybe, but I got no money to pay for a hospital. That'll all be taken care of. How do you know? Never mind now. Just go to the hospital and get well. That's all you have to think about. Well, if that wasn't Jimmy's mother, who was it, Colin? My name's Lee Coralie. Miss or Mrs.? Miss, I think. Uh, just after you left, Jimmy's mother showed up. Yeah, I'll go on. Yes, and uh, it was Jimmy's mother, Mrs. Newton, who beat up Miss Lee. Did she give any reason no, for it? No, but she promised to tell me everything. Uh, look, Harris, would you have time to take Jimmy with you and bring him back later? I think Jimmy's mother will talk more freely to me if Jimmy isn't around. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. So I'll do that. Hey, Jimmy. that these two men kidnapped your husband. But I, I don't know for sure whether Jim ever them really here was forced to go. But after Jim was in the car, one of them... Which one? Me, the one with the German accent. He called me to the back door and threatened me. Threatened you? Well, he said if I tried to reach my husband or told anyone about his being gone, well, they'd grab Jimmy and I'd never see him again. Had you known these men before, Mrs. Newton? Yes, I saw them once when they, when they were both working for my husband on his train near Mojave. That was over a year ago. Your husband still had faith in this claim. Oh, yes, Mr. Collins. Do you suppose this German and Mexican were scheming to get your husband's claim away from him? Well, maybe they were. I don't know. Still, I couldn't figure out why Jim would go away and stay away without even letting us hear from him until the two men came here again today with that woman who called herself Coralie. Well, what happened then? Well, I left him in, and I asked about Jim, and the German Riker answered. Your husband is good at help. Are you too? Si, senora. Only... He don't want he should see you no more. Jim, Jim doesn't want to see me. Well, what do you mean? For you, senora, he is, uh, is, uh, what you say, washed up. What? Oh, oh, he couldn't be. No? Well, Jim told me different. But who are you? Uh, this is Fräulein. I mean, Miss Lee, Frau Newton. Miss Cora Lee. Jim told you. Jim talked to you about me. Oh, sure, plenty. But I wanted to see for myself. Main thing I came for, though, is Jim's things. Jim Singh. Yeah, you know, his personal belongings. Said they were all in one closet. Did you bring in those suitcases, boys? Yeah, they're in the car. Come on, Philippe, and help me get them. So, so you stolen my Jim away from me. I wouldn't say stolen, sister. You lost Jim before I ever laid eyes on him. I'm sorry for you, but how a little shrimp like you could expect to hold a he-man like Jim Newton is more than I can. Well, you'll see. Little shrimp am I. You'll see. And you'll find out. Put down that poker. Oh, please, please, don't hit me. Oh, Jim, you there is some chance, somebody, or what has happened? That's Cora. There's the corner on the floor. Oh, oh, Himmel! Cora's dead. You killed her. Oh, I hope so. Come on, Lachis. We're getting out of here. Oh, oh what got into me? What did I do that for? Oh, even if she did take him away from me. Oh, oh how can I do a thing like that? Why, it's a murder, I tell you. It's a murder. I guess I was crazy for those few minutes. Will you go with me tomorrow to the hospital and see Coralie? Yes. Yes, I'll go with you, Mr. Collins. Well, good afternoon, Miss Lee. Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Collins. I'm sure glad you brought Mrs. Newton. <laughs> Hello, Mom. Jimmy! Well, I thought you were at school. What are you doing here? Mr. Collins brought me, Mom. He said Mr. Lee wanted to see me. He bought the, the, me, me these flowers, too, to bring to her. Look, Mom. Oh, aren't they lovely? They're the nicest flowers I've ever had from anybody. Jimmy and I have been having a nice visit, haven't we, Jimmy? Swell. Now, look, Jimmy. We'll have lots more visits. But uh, would you wait outside now while I talk with your mother and Mr. Collins? Sure, Miss Lee. Now, look, Mrs. Newton. Please let's not say anything about what happened yesterday. I had it coming, but it wasn't all my fault. They lied to me, Riker and Ortiz, about how things were between you and your husband. And I never knew anything about Jimmy. You'd better tell Mrs. Newton the whole story. I want to. Well, I did like Jim. I was crazy about him, but he never gave me a tumble. So Riker suggested that if you send your things out to him with word that you were through, 
Oh, I mean, if we brought them and told Jim that, why, then maybe I'd have a chance. But I know now that I never would have had. You, you've seen Jim these last six weeks. Yeah, in that new discovery camp 90 miles from the railroad, north of Kingman. I was running a boarding house there. That's how I met your husband and his partners, Reicher and Ortiz. But why didn't Jim write me? Oh, but he did. But he trusted Riker to mail the letters. Instead, Riker burnt them. I never realized until yesterday what Riker intended doing, and last night after the doctor attended me, why, I got to thinking about the risks Jim was running being mixed up with those two men. And I knew he had an offer to sell out his interest in the mine, and so Mr. Collins helped me send a wire to Jim advising him to take the offer and get back here as soon as he could. He sent it in care of the sheriff, and so we knew it'll reach him. Why, Mr. Harris fixed that. Oh, thank you. Can you ever forgive me? Now, listen, Mrs. Milton, I'm the one that needs forgiven. But if it's all right with you, let's just forget the whole thing and pretend it never happened. Now, can't we do that? Of course, if you're willing to. Mom, Mom, Dad's here. Your father? Oh, he's here? Yeah. Can I bring him in, Miss Lee? Can I? Sure, Jimmy, bring him in. Oh, Jim. Honey. Gosh, I'm sure glad to see you and Jim again. Oh, Jim, darling. No, no. I'm so glad to see you. You'll have to kind of excuse my wife, folks. She cries easy, always has, and we haven't seen each other for quite a while. But Cora, what happened to you? What put you in the hospital? Oh, a little accident, Jim. Nothing serious. I'll be back tossing flapjacks within ten days at the latest, the doctor says. Did you get my wire? Yes, and I got the money, too, for my interest. Thanks a lot. I guess you've met my wife. Sure, we've met. But you haven't met Mr. Collins. Well, I'm sure glad to meet you, Mr. Collins. Well, I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Newton. You won't mind my having a mining engineer make a report on that claim of yours? Mine? Say, that's what I've been trying to do for years. Only I've never had enough money to hire a good one. Well, now look, I think Miss Lee has had enough company for one day. Sure. Come on, everybody. Goodbye, Cora. Thanks for everything. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, Mrs. Newton. Hey, Jimmy. Yes, Miss Lee. Would you do me a favor? Sure, Miss Lee. Stay and talk to me for a while. You know, Jimmy, your parents haven't seen each other for quite some time, and they might like to, well, kind of get acquainted. Why, I'd love to. And so, ladies and gentlemen, ends the story that I have entitled... The Avenging Angel Strikes Again. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard the concluding chapter of a true-to-life story brought to you by Detective Nicholas B. Harris, internationally famous Los Angeles criminologist and chief of the detective agency bearing his name. Although this was a true story, fictitious names and places have been used throughout this narrative. The story was dramatized for radio presentation by Ralph Burchard and as a Carolyn Cairo production. Those participating in the radio drama were Dorothy Wade, C. Andre Fox, Bob Holton, Carolyn Cairo, Calvin Ellison, and Charles E. Bender. And now may we call your attention to a new series of crime prevention programs featuring Detective Harris entitled How Detectives Work. This new series is heard each Sunday afternoon over this same station at 12.30 p.m. All the scientific methods used in modern-day crime prevention are explained by Mr. Harris. Remember the time, 12.30. The station, KECA, and the program, How Detectives Work, featuring Detective Nicholas B. Harris. Next Tuesday, the Nick Harris program will be heard at its regular time, 8.15. Remember, next Tuesday night at 8.15, another Salute to the Law, presented by Detective Nicholas B. Harris.